recognizes Ms. Lee for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I literally was about to get up and go to vote, so I appreciate being called on. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're here today because the Food and Drug Administration is committed to using science and data as a basis for making policy decisions to protect public health and safety. FDA has publicly and repeatedly stated that it had a roster of important questions about hemp-derived products that needed answers before it could regulate these products. They had questions about how much hemp-derived product an individual could safely consume in a day, whether this amount varies depending on the form taken, potential negative interactions with other drugs or substances, effects on special populations like children or the elderly, and the risks of long-term exposure. To be clear, I'm glad we've extended hemp and CBD into our marketplace. However, anecdotal, ev uh, anecdotal evidence and marketing claims are not the same as rigorous scientific research. Um, Dr. Schauer, what is the problem with using online, ca online calculators or trusting product manufacturers regarding an appropriate dose of CBD? Well, I think uh, state hemp and cannabis regulators would tell you that we need uh, academic data, we need nonpartisan data sources, and uh, we need pathways that account for what we're seeing in the field. So we're not just seeing dietary supplements in the field, we're seeing inhalables and, and combustible products as well. We need data on those products. Those products don't fit neatly into a regulatory pathway that FDA currently has um, and, and need to be studied. These novel cannabinoids that are coming out as well, being converted from CBD, we need data to understand those. And increasingly, very few products are just CBD. The products contain CBD and many other cannabinoids. We need to understand how those cannabinoids interact, uh, what their effects are on, on humans, and we need not to be using humans as the test case for that. We really do need science to create thoughtful regulation. So would regulating industry through the existing food and dietary supplemental regulatory pathway address these concerns with the safety of CBD products, yes or no? I don't believe that it will. Uh, if, I, if I can take a second, there are three main reasons, I think, for that. One is we have inhalable and combusted products that don't fit into a food or dietary supplement pathway. Two, uh, dietary supplements usually follow GMP practices. Every state is trying to use testing. We really need to know what contaminants are in the products, and that's not a traditional part of the dietary supplement pathway. And then finally, we need specific warnings and labeling based on the route of administration, which again is, is not just food or dietary supplement. It includes other pathways. So the FDA believes it needs additional scientific studies and new authorities to balance consumer access with appropriate safeguards and oversight. This subcommittee should understand the need for careful oversight, and we should work with the FDA to achieve it. In addition to protecting public health, we also need to ensure we encourage diversity and inclusion in this growing industry. I've worked hard in this Congress to promote diversity, both in and out of committee hearings. In my role on Science, Space, and Technology uh, Committee, I'll be sending a letter to the chair addressing the need for more diverse witnesses. Mr. Miller, can you tell us about the purpose of the U.S. Hemp Roundtable's Minority Empowerment Committee? Yeah, as you are, are all too aware, cannabis has a very sad history when it comes to disparate treatment of people of color, and uh, and there's been structural racism that's pervaded federal farm programs, and so that's why our organization, and I think the industry is a lar at large, is is uh, really engaged in an effort to promote diversity and equity in our ranks. Thank you. Uh, effective oversight and a dedication to science and evidence are the best way to move forward with hemp and CBD. However, I also want to be sure that we are, deliber are deliberate in our approach to regulation and don't follow the path of over-criminalization. I'm encouraged by the potential benefits of these products and look forward to continuing to learn and work on this issue. Uh, with that, thank you so much, and I yield back.